Hey, y'all, I was with my prison daughter the other day, and we had the pleasure of meeting Sean Wright, the co-founder of the Wright Cause Urban Youth Conservation. Sean Wright is a formerly incarcerated gentleman set on making positive impacts on youth getting out of the prison system. We were talking about ways that we could collaborate and ideas for our community. Our conversation got so good that we decided to hit the record button on my phone. So this isn't an interview. This is a little bit different style content than you guys normally see from me. I hope it feels like you're just dropping in on a conversation. Change starts with conversations like these and welcome. Focus on, mm -hmm. and that's why it's important. You know, I, I, how can I expect you to leave your woman? Right. How do I expect you to leave your husband? You know, if you're in survival mode, like we're talking about, and I tell you, okay, you know, only you, only you gotta leave the kids and, and the other grown person over there. That's not a choice that you make. If I'm out here with you, it's do or die, right? I'm not leaving my significant other or my girlfriend or whatever you are. You with me. How could I leave you? These are, these are choices that people should not have to make. And that's why it's important for us to focus on that family dynamic. Because when you're out there helping, you might not, it may not be the person that you come in contact with that needs the most help. By helping the family may help him. It's going to trickle down and helping him. Yeah. And that's what we always need. We don't need, it's, it's too many, uh, okay, yeah, we got these services, but you got to have this, this, and this. I don't have ID. Can I still, where's the emergency funds at? Right. There is none. Right. So it's almost like this is a catch-22. It's created to fail, to yeah. fail us. Yeah, exactly. Even just the ID was so crucial, like getting birth certificates and IDs, all your documentation that you, you're not used to not having, your social security yeah. card. We were at the Parkland Hospital in Dallas there right. one time and my wife was having a procedure done and I stepped outside for some air and there was a man and he, he was about 50 years old and he said, I just, I don't know why I'm asking you, but I see you and you look like somebody that can help me. And I just, I thought he needed money. Right. And, um, and so I said, what, what's up? What's going right. on? And he said, I have never had a copy of my birth certificate. I've been in prison for 30 years and I don't know how to fill the form out. Yeah. I'm here. I was born here, but I don't know. This is foreign to me. Exactly. You know, I said, sit down. Yeah, let's do it. Let's fill exactly. this out. Um, and so those, those kind of resources, it's not necessarily just even rides or funding some of it is just Every show me not, how yeah. it's mentorship it's not even know about loans I, I barely found out what a loan was in 2020 i was locked up so long right and as my whole teenage years i just didn't know anything so i got out i found out what a loan was i didn't even know efficiency apartments existed yeah i didn't know there was a such thing as that yeah. i thought it was just <laughs> section eight and that's it right. they said no there's housing there's this is see apartments. I didn't know nothing about none of that. I didn't know that. That's why mentorship mm -hmm. is so important. Mm -hmm. That's why somebody to walk you through mm -hmm. and make sure that you don't make these critical mistakes. Mm -hmm. If you only got so much money, you can't afford to throw away half of it on a mistake. Right. You got to make sure mm -hmm. we hit it right the first time. Right. So that's why men mentorship is so important. I would love to have somebody that's already been through it mm -hmm. to guide me through all the things that they, all the doors that slammed in their face, okay, we ain't got to go through that. Because somebody that's fragile, you think about a youth that's been told no all this time, they don't want to ask because they're, in, they're already thinking that it's going to yeah. result in no. Yeah. So why even ask? Yeah. When so everybody don't handle you like that, but it's that one person that maybe handles you the, really the wrong way. And so... Some of the things that we're hearing out of the youth prisons here in Texas are pretty heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. uh, those those kids are going through a lot from their authority. So right. for sure, for absolute certain, there's a lack of trust for adults. For I, I'll tell you one thing about that survival mode. Let me tell you, I learned survival mode at 13 because you got to learn that. Yeah. Well, what they, think, they think adult prison is worse than anything and all. You think Rikers and all that's bad? Okay, yeah, cool, fine. 
What about these kids, Christian? Yeah. Why y'all ain't take a look at that? You know, you know, we don't during the time I was there, four years, the time I was there. I kid you not, I had brick burns, carpet burns, concrete burns, everything. Anything they can smash our head on, scrape it on, or whatever. You get it. And you and you not only you not only dealing with one person doing this to you. No, nah, they got their own little SWAT team. So yeah. you got like five or six dudes on this little bitty kid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I told her, I think it was on the video, I don't know, but I told her just in the conversation, like half the stuff they do in there, if you did that in the free world, they'll call CPS on you. Right. Why they ain't call CPS on these folks though? These people, you take they, these people kids, because something a nurse done heard in the conversation or the nurse done said something about something that's old, she ain't had nothing to do with it, you right. call the laws. Now these people up here taking these girl baby and all that. No, man. No, it don't work like that. Or because somebody picked up the phone and you got a tip. No, man. What about these prisons? What about these right. TYCs and stuff? One girl, I kid you not. She made a joke. Just a joke. Said the dude look like Santana. You know, Santana the same right. that played the guitar. Okay. She right, just right. said the dude look like Santana. He did. I mean, he do. But he took it to heart. The man took it to heart. And scraped this girl face up on the concrete. She fell asleep on the pillow. Pillow was stuck to her face. They had to carry that pillow to in her face to the uh wow. infirmary, just like this. Wow. No, oh, man, that's that's crazy. Yeah. Man. These young people getting out, we didn't really touch on what kind of mental health services mm -hmm. they need. They need emotional and mental health support as well. It's 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 we need we need for them to have every bit of support that a grown person will have times too. You know, when we talk about mental health is is imperative on why, you know, we reoffend and recidivism rate is so high because there's really no way for them to be helped. Like you have to go above and beyond to prove yourself because that's what you're doing. Over and over and over you're proving yourself and you you can never be, you know, good enough. Because mm -hmm. everybody feels like that when you're constantly ridiculed by a grown person you know if even with parole if my parole officer is to help me reintegrate back into society but the only thing you could talk about is what i'm not doing you ain't i have not never seen a list of resources oh yeah call these places you know they'll give you this they give you that you know when you got somebody good that really wants to see you win this is what they do they go above and beyond you know, but when your job calls for it, then you say, you know what, I'm not supposed to be doing this. But, you know, when you meet somebody like that, yeah, you definitely take a hold of them because yeah. that's one of the good ones. But when everybody else, their main thing is that's not my job. Yeah. I feel like they go, because I learned that you learn stuff when you go to TYC. I won't give right. them the, I give them the benefit of the doubt. They try, they try to, some caseworkers will try to teach them stuff, right. you know. And we had classes too, just like just like regular folks. We had classes, we had drug classes, anger management classes. Then you got your regular class. Right. That that's the regular where you learn cognitive life skills, which the majority of the people that go to the prisons ain't never learned that in their life. Right. So when they get out, they don't know how to deal with all this that's going on with that the world is throwing at them. So now you got people with mental health problems, don't know who to run to. So now they flipping out on anybody they see. And when they calm down, it's I'm sorry, and they don't even know that person don't even want to talk to them no more. So right. they don't flip that on. No. Right. Be that friend, sit there and take it. You yeah. that friend, sit there and take it. Listen to what they gotta say. They probably need somebody to go off on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. They probably need that. Exactly. And then you just sit there and tell them now did that make you feel better or what how it make you feel, figure out what's going on with them. You ain't gotta just put a point of finger and blame them and do all that. No, man. That's how some of them people go back. Yeah. They don't. They can't find help. You know, when there's different levels of mental health, you don't know what what's your, you know, your breaking point. Mm -hmm. You don't know what mm -hmm. sets you off in so many words. Mm -hmm. You don't know what that is until it happens. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it may be something from your past. It may be, you know, a, a, a scar or a situation that's happening inside the jail mm -hmm. that you don't know what sets you off and makes mm -hmm. you, you know, revert to acting like you got to be in survival mode all over again, like they're saving your own life. So, and, you know, it's sad that we talk about youth. When I went to prison, I was a youth. They don't teach you. When I got out of prison, they figured that I knew how to 
make an email for myself. Yeah. Fill out a job application. They say, yeah, you got there's a laptop right there. So there is no life skills. Yeah. You have to know. teach yourself and you have yeah. to you know, it's a saying in there, they say, before you can be a man, you first got to see a man because you're emulating what a man looks like because nobody's teaching you. Exactly. This is the craziest thing ever. That's exactly how I go, though. If they don't teach you, some, some people might not want to take the time out to learn to face it. But I know I tried to. I didn't know how to do uh, none of that. I asked one person, they was just like, go to work I get over there. I'll go pick up a food. Oh, your job, sir. How you do that? Like, right. I don't even know how to go Going into the like, system as a 13 year old, especially yeah. coming out expected to do grown folks things. And, and that's what they're doing now. And there's no way, even with me and my first job, I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. I don't know proper etiquette when you're going in for a job interview. Who knows that? I never had a job. Right. You know, and. Those are things that nobody tells you because they figure that you would be all right. Oh, and that's you're natural. Go ahead. That you just said you never had a job. That's another thing to get me. I've never had a job, so I don't have no work experience. So now jobs won't hire me because I don't have that work experience. Unless you And what you did in the pen don't count, obviously. <laughs> all the certificates are. Right. <laughs> like, Mailing in through yeah. the mail to get those certificates. Yeah. Even your little jobs, you worked in a kitchen jobs, commissary, working on trucks. And that don't even count. And it's like, what was the point of trying to make this work? I wonder if we could talk about solutions then. So we know, I mean, we know the problems, right? We know, we know what we're, we've identified a, a plethora of things that youth need getting out of the system. So how do we help them with that? Well, for mental health, I would say find you that, find you somebody, find you somebody. You don't got to take no pills. Or to control anything. You don't need no pills. You just got to find you somebody to talk to. Maybe you need to let it out that way. Maybe you need to write it down like they used to tell us. Write it down in a letter. Mail it like you finna mail it. Put it in the mailbox. It ain't going nowhere. Just put it in there. Yeah, and for a lot of the youth that may be struggling on, on different levels, we you may want to look into the Compassionate Youth Program in Texas. You know, that, that may be some form of relief also and i feel like um we don't need to be sending our kids to warehouse jobs we need to be sending them to um uh, ac academic schools and, and trade schools that's what we want to do we don't want to send our kids we want to send them to trade schools because no matter what they would still be able to compete in the workforce and this is how we rebuild it i don't think sending them to the warehouse to get 20 years out of them is something because you're we're putting different and it, and it's a physical health thing too when these when these youth are coming out of prison you know it's a physical it's physically mentally and emotionally you know as far as the health part of it if you've been sleeping on the bunk for 10 years or even four years your body is starting to conform to the bunk so you know a lot of things happen from that arthritis there's no child growing up on a metal slab on a concrete slab because that's all it is the mattresses it is big you know we gotta we gotta hold some people accountable that's what we want yeah we want solutions but guess what if the people at the top really don't want to help the kids or they really don't if they can't see themselves being wrong we got to get some people that that are really emotional and can't see themselves in these same aspects. If you can't see yourself being mistreated like this, then how can you ever have sympathy or even empathy for the next person? Change starts with conversations, just really similar to this, talking about problems, talking about solutions, ideas. And um, one thing that your organization, the Right Cause Urban Youth, youth Conservation, um, you guys are starting to address some of these needs for youth getting out of prison in the DFW area. And you're, in, you're a growing organization. So I can, I'm really excited to check back in with you like six months and then a year, because I know that you guys have the drive, the want to, and um, absolutely the experience and the ability to make some huge things happen. So I'm, I'm excited to that. Miala uh, is going to be getting involved. 
And I'm excited to see that also. I love working with kids, man. I, I, I always tell them, I got my God brother right now. I'm fucking him now. He, 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 you know where the blood related to me. That's right. It's a boy. He's so cool. I'm, like we are. Oh, exactly. I'm going to start with him. I've been, been dealing with, uh, trying to deal with his sister. You know, some people don't want to listen. Some people have a rebellious mind. But the way to get through to those is you just you, you do stuff for them that they ain't never did. These kids ain't never went to the movies. I took them to the movies. She ain't anti-social no more. Right. She talks now. She's yeah. not quiet. She's not shy. She talks now. And I took them to the movies on Valentine's Day. They were my date. Right. You know what I'm saying? I just took them somewhere. Right. Well, then I took them and got them in the building burn. We went to watch the Oprah, the, the Detective Pikachu. Right. When they burned. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> oh, I think right. another kid was so happy they wanted to go back. Well, that's mentorship. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a, that's an informal mentorship, mm-hmm. and that's important. And I think you made such a great point right there how – People can step in 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 all different kind of areas. Uh, mentorship is everywhere. The opportunity is yeah. everywhere. So you had capacity to give a piece of yourself and and a little bit of extra, and you took that opportunity. That's incredible. I feel like there's a difference between you teaching kids and you also getting involved with the teaching you're doing with these kids. You can't right. just tell them, "Oh, you need to do this this next." That's just like giving them some homework and telling them to do the homework and you teach them nothing that's on that paper. Yeah, the lead by example is really the most important form of mentorship or teaching anybody yes. anything. You know, you don't want anybody to go through any of the mistakes that you made. You know, it's a lot of things that we didn't know that was actually rules and law. Mm-hmm. And so we never knew until we was in the courtroom being surrounded by a bunch of information that we're not privy to. We've never heard pro se certain little words you know how do you expect yeah. somebody to know that yeah. you know and 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 even today when you know i go i, I went on a job interview and they told me all these hidden rules and i said well how would i know that right how would i know they don't teach it enough. so what a, what a good mentor yeah. yeah with good mentorship i can teach you i can tell you hey man don't go in there because they're going to say this to yeah. you they're going to do this yeah. to you they just did it to me yeah and by word of mouth, you know. That's so. what I love about resources from formerly incarcerated folks. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody's been in prison. Everybody that has been in prison has seen that list mm-hmm. get passed around, and it may have been rewritten, handwritten, notes written. But call this when you get out. This, yeah. They're yeah. going to give you five hundred dollars to yeah. get started. Call this, call this, yeah. and you get out, and none of it. You go down yeah. that list, and not one thing but i'll tell you what if you go up to somebody that did time mm-hmm. and is in your area and oh, yeah. say hey what do i do here well look go in here don't apply there because they say they're background right. friendly but there ain't no right. felons working exactly. there yeah. <laughs> you know but try here and yeah. hey i got a homeboy that works over here yeah. and you know this is the kind of resources we're talking about and that's what's great about these nonprofits that yeah. are led by formerly incarcerated people it's a powerful <laughs> thing yeah, it's, it's definitely because if when you've been through that, you definitely don't want the same person. And, you know, we connected. I don't care what state you did time in. If you're going through the same thing I just went through, I'm for you. I'm for you a thousand percent. And I'm going to show up for you.